This video will demonstrate how to set up a parametric modulation analysis in FSL. If you already have the Amazon Web Services Downloader installed from the FSL tutorial, then you can open a terminal, make sure you go to the desktop, and then type the following. AWS S3 Sync No Sign Request, followed by this web address. It'll take a few moments to download. We're going to fade out and come back when it's finished. When it's finished downloading, move it to a different name called Gambles. To prepare the data for a parametric modulation analysis, we will create a pre-processing pipeline similar to the one we used in the FSL tutorial. The rest of this video assumes you've already done that walkthrough, so we won't discuss the details of pre-processing and analysis in depth. This experiment consisted of several gambles presented to the participant, each of which had a potential gain and a potential loss. We will first create timing files that contain onsets for the gamble, the parametric value of the potential gain, and the parametric value for the potential loss for each run. In total, we will create nine regressors. You can download a script to convert the timings into a format that FSL understands by going to this website clicking on raw, right-clicking and then clicking save as, and saving it into the gambles directory. Once it's been downloaded, navigate to that directory with the terminal and run the script by typing bash make FSL timings gambles.sh. You should see nine text files in each func directory representing the onset times. If we take a look inside one of these new onset files, such as gambles gain run1.txt, you see the three column format that you've used in the previous FSL tutorials. The first column is the onset time in seconds. The second column is the duration in seconds. And the third column is a parametric modulator. When we weren't doing a parametric modulation analysis, the third column was simply a column of ones. But in this case, we have two parametric modulators, one for gain, one for loss, and this third column represents the overall parametric modulation for that trial. Before we open the feed GUI, we need to skull strip the brain using BET2. From the gambles directory, navigate to the sub01 directory and type the following. BET2 on at slash sub01t1w.nai.gz sub01 t1w underscore brain dot nai dot gz. When that finishes, open the feed GUI by typing feet underscore gui from the terminal. Just as in the FSL tutorial, we will create a template design file that we can use in a for loop to analyze all of the subjects. In the data tab, click on select 40 data, navigate to the func folder, and select the file sub01 run01. Click OK. In the output directory field, type run01. This will be the feed directory in which all the output data is stored. Leave the defaults as they are in the pre-stats tab, and in the registration tab for the main structural image, select the brain extracted anatomical file. Also change the search space to full and degrees of freedom to 12 for both images. In the stats tab, click on full model setup. Type the number three in the field of number of original EVs and label them in the following order. Gambles, gain PM, and loss PM. For each one, select custom three column format for the basic shape and select the corresponding file name. So for example, gambles run one for gambles, gambles gain run one for gain PM, and gambles loss run one for loss. PM. In the Contrasts and F-Tests tab, create four contrasts and label them as follows with the corresponding contrast weights. Gambles, Gain PM, Loss PM, and Gain minus Loss underscore PM with these contrast weights. When you're done, click on the Save button at the bottom of the graphical user interface and call the output design run1.fsf. 
and save it into the gambles directory. Do the same procedure for the other two runs, updating the functional run and the timing files, and saving the design as design run2.fsf and run3.fsf. Save these files into the gambles directory as well. We're going to speed up a little bit here as we do these other analyses for runs two and three. Next, download the file Run First Level Analysis Gambles from the same GitHub directory. Save it by clicking on Raw, right clicking, and then Save As, and put it into your Gambles directory, just like you did it with the timing conversion script. And run it by typing bash run first level analysis gambles.sh. It's going to take several hours to run, so we're going to leave for a little bit and come back when it has finished. When the first level analyses have finished, from the gambles directory, type ls-d dollar sign pwd slash sub dash question mark question mark run asterisk. You may want to resize your window so you only get one line per output. This will create a list of all the first level feed directories. Copy the output to your clipboard and then open up a new feed GUI from the command line. Select higher level analysis from the drop down menu and make sure that inputs are lower level feed directories is selected. Change the number of inputs to 48 and then click on select feed directories. Click paste and then press Control Y on the keyboard to paste the list of feed directories. Click OK and leave the boxes checked next to use lower level copes. For the output directory, type gambles underscore second level. In the stats tab, change the mixed effects to fixed effects. Then click on full model setup and change the number of main EVs to 16. And fill in the matrix with three ones for each subject as shown in the following demonstration. I'm going to speed this up because the pattern, once you get it for a few subjects, is the same for everybody. And also update the contrasts and F-test tab so that there are 16 contrasts and a contrast weight of one per subject. Click OK, and then click the Go button. This will average the parameter estimate for each aggressor across all three runs, and it will take an hour or two. When that finishes, open a new feed GUI and select Inputs are 3D Cope Images from Feed Directories, and change the number of inputs from 3 to 16. Use the terminal to navigate to the directory gambles second level dot slash cope two dot feet slash stats and type ls dollar sign pwd slash cope asterisk a pipe sort dash v. This will return a list of all the cope images for the second contrast we specified, which is the parametric modulation of gain. Copy this list, click on select cope images. Click Paste, then type Control y to paste the list. Click OK, and label the output directory Gambles Third Level Gain. And make sure it's in your Gambles directory. In the Stats tab, you can leave the default of Mixed Effects Flame 1. Click on Model Setup Wizard, and select Single Group Average. Click Process and then click Go. This analysis will take 10 to 20 minutes. 
To view the results, navigate to the directory gambles thirdlevel.gfeed and open Fossilize. Select File, Add Standard, and choose the template MNI 152T1 1mm. Next, click on File, Add from File, and select Thresh ZSTAT 1. Change the color scale to red-yellow to better see the outline of the cluster. And also click on the gear icon and choose Linear Interpolation to smooth the edges. You should see something like this. We see that there is significant parametric modulation of gain within the ventral striatum, as we would expect. However, we also know that FSL's Flame 1 method for cluster correction can be overly conservative. See, for example, figure one of Eklund et al. 2016. We can instead use a non-parametric option such as randomize in conjunction with threshold-free cluster enhancement in order to balance the width and height of each cluster. To do this, navigate to the directory gambles second level feet, cope 2 feet slash stats, which contains the z-statistic images for the parametric modulation of gain. Merge the files into a single data set using FSL merge, and then move it to the main gambles directory and go back to the gambles directory. Now run randomize using the dash one flag to indicate that this is a one sample t-test and the dash t flag to do threshold free cluster enhancement. We will also run 5000 simulations. When randomize finishes, load the file all z's randomize tfce core p tset1 in fossilize, which is right there, and then change the min threshold to 0.95. This will show all the tfce clusters at an alpha threshold of p equals 0.05. Note how many more clusters there are and how these were hidden with the flame one approach. As an exercise, try running the same analysis with the parametric modulation of loss. These are located in the second levels directory as COPE 3. You may have to look at the unthresholded results since, at least when I did it, the loss results do not pass the threshold in either Flame 1 or TFCE. Nevertheless, you should still see an association of negative bolt signal with the loss parametric modulators. Compare your results to those of Tom et al. 2007. Did they look similar, different, and why do you think that is? Once you have the experience doing parametric modulation in FSL, you should be able to adapt these scripts to any other kind of parametric modulation design that you have. I hope this helps, and you can look at the other videos in SPM or AFNI if you want to know how to do this analysis in another software package. Good luck.